Thank you, Bishop, for that word this morning. That is what prophetic feast is all about. And just because I have to say something, and he instructed I say something, if not, I will share the grace. This morning, don't take what you are hearing from this altar lightly. It's not as usual. God changes moments with words. He changes situations with words. God will always change lives with words. Be careful about men who come with empty words. They wasted your time. It's very important. Like I said, the first time words were used in the Bible was to create. To call what was not to begin to come. If you are a son of God, then begin to create with your mouth. The bishop created lands before April here now. He created cars. He called things that are not to come to be. Witches and wizards use it and believers are keeping quiet. So the problem is not the witch. The problem is your silence. The problem is your ignorance. I went into an office and we needed to process something for land. Did all the thing, did all the inspection and at the, at the end of the day the bank said, uh, okay, you have to bring two million. I said, for what? He said, for my signature. I said, what do you mean? I know I'm going to appreciate you, but you don't tell me what to give to you. He said, sir, except you don't want your approval. I said, all right, you will approve a certificate for me. I will approve your office. You will expire here and another person will sign it. He said, ha, the pastor. He said, today you will know who is the pastor. Just one month, the conditional was changed. He was changed. When I came there next, he was not there. In fact, as I finished with the person that was there and was coming out, I saw him. I saw guy, where are you? He said, Pastor, up and me how. That's what he said to me. My friend, this morning I release your mouth. I said, I release your mouth. One of my friends said, a pastor, he said, I have never seen one million in my life. That's what he said to me. I said, I know you are genuine. I know you are not a fake prophet. You will see one million. And they asked, how will it happen? I said, do you have a checkbook? He said, yes. I said, pull out your checkbook. Write one million naira on it. Sign it. Paste it in front of your mirror. Every morning you see it. Call one million. Somebody came with another person for child dedication in his church and saw the church as the way it is and decided he needed to bless the church. Guess how much he gave to the church? One million. Listen to me. You don't need to clap. Can you learn to talk like your bishop? Don't let anything intimidate you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I'm going to just give you something and I release you to go. This is the word God gave me while I was praying for 2024. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It is very popular. It is very common. But I want to show you something this morning. And that will change who you are and how you do things. This is what the Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Say it the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you what? Now, this is what you know to, to make you understand it. 
Give me the message Bible. Give me the message Bible. And that is where I'm just going to stand. I show you the word of God and you. This morning, something heavy is about to land in your hands. 2024 will make you somebody that will put your enemies to shame. No, somebody listening to me, I am not talking for talking's sake. Get ready to buy land. I had bishops say it. In my list of the covenants, the Bible says you will buy lands. It's like you don't have message Bible. Somebody who has message it's Bible. Here. It's here. I know what I am doing. Now, let's take it one after the other, sir. Message Bible says, I know Lord, what I am doing. I know what I am doing. Your case is not an accident to God. I have Listen, hold on, sir. The truth of the matter is that if you know what God is doing every time, He is no longer God. A time comes when God doesn't make sense. A time comes when it's like God does not do anything. now something may be nothing spoils before Him. I want to tell somebody here. God knows what he is doing. Now look at the next thing. That is the one that interests me, sir. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care now, of you. Now you could here. Okay. I have your life planned out. How many of you watch movie? Who don't watch Z? Who don't Telemundo? Who don't African Magic? Some of us, no action. Make up Maro Bajie or Bobo. Are they more interested? Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you are shouting, "Hey, Unyawona," the person who wrote the script is laughing because he actually knows the end. He knows what is going to happen. Are you following? Now, when they are preparing to do the acting, he will bring in the right people that will act that particular. The person that can make you to cry. They will bring somebody who, once you say something, the person will cry without anybody touching the person. You see tears. They will tell you, yeah, start crying. They will try people and try people until they get the best person that is there. They will say, you will act this thing. Are you following what I'm saying? In your life, God has planned out everyone that will fulfill everything, including those that will cause you pain. He knows they will be there. I have it planned out. I know the time when you will step out of shame. I know the time when you are going to celebrate. I know the time when you are going to rise. You will not remain like that. The story started with you, poor, but it will end with you, rich. I have it all planned out. I have it all planned out. Slap your chest and say, God has a plan for me. God has a plan for me. Sir, what is the next thing? Plan to take care of you. Abandon you. And not to abandon you. Plan. To take care of you and not to abandon you. I stayed on this scripture for three days. And for the whole of December, I was on this scripture. And God spoke something to me. Please hear me. This is my word for you this morning. The Lord said to me, I have plans to take care of you. Even if dollar goes to 5,000 it does not affect my plan I, I have plans that even when your money can pay the bill I have plans to bring money I 
I'm watching how they are treating you. I have plans to put them to shame. I stand up on this altar to declare in 2024, they will not find you where they want to leave you. Amen. Amen. You are stepping out of that cocoon. You are stepping out of isolation. You are stepping out of abandonment. You will be a surprise to your family. Amen. You will be a surprise on your streets. Amen. Something will happen that will make people come to see who you are. Amen. If you are that person, let me hear your amen this morning. Amen. Now, when he said, I have plans to take care of you and not to abandon you. See, some of us are not fasting for breakthrough. I fast to get insight on what God is saying. I do fasting to get to decode what God is saying. I will stay without food. God, explain to me. Show me what you're talking about. When I saw this, I said, God, what are you talking about? God said to me, look at this. He said, what I'm about to give you will attract jealousy. Where I'm taking you will attract enemies. There are people in your family that will not want you to get there. So when they see you, they will attack you. And God said to me, my plan accommodates your enemies. I have made plans on how to take people that will gossip. I have made plans on how to take care of people that will come against you. I have plans so that your, your enemies are coming up does not shake me because my plan accommodates them. That is why he said, for this cause, the son of man was made manifest that he may destroy the works of darkness. He knew they were coming. He sent the son of man first. My plan accommodates your enemies. Oh, I felt excited. That's why I can enter any crusade ground and tell any witch you're invited. Because I have discovered who I am in the plan of God. He said, you are the apple of God's eye. And so God is saying, a time will come when people you trusted will abandon you. A time will come when people you want to help you are the people that are fighting you. And God is saying, in my plan, I will take care of you. I will not go as others have gone. When you look around, you don't find anybody. Look around, you will see God. Am I talking to somebody here? I don't care where you are now. Everybody has, a, has deserted you. Nobody cares about you. God cares about you. Very soon he will do something that will make the same people who run away to come back to identify with you. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. Number two. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Oh my God. My plan is to look at what you desire and bring it. I said, God, supposing I can meet up with what it takes. And God said to me, this is the last one I give to you. My plans I have already made. And I know that you are a human being. Your strength is not my strength. So my plan accommodates your mistake. My plan accommodates your error. Because I know you cannot be me. I know you may not have the strength to fight some people and you may make mistakes. I know you are human. You can become angry and do things. The flesh can overwhelm you. But my plans accommodate your mistake. So that you failed yesterday does not mean you can't rise and succeed. Am I talking to somebody this morning? God has a plan for me. Slap your chest and declare, I am in God's plan. If you are in God's plan, then go out there and release God's plan. Manifest God's plan. Stop thinking about your failure yesterday. 
Stop thinking about the business that failed. Stop thinking about the relationship you could not control. Stop thinking about the bad investments you made that your money is gone. Listen, the money that was gone, you made it. You can make another one. Stop thinking because somebody left you. You cannot do anything again. If that person died, will you die? Somebody wake up this morning. Stop looking for sympathy. Sympathy will not pay your bill. My father died. You know it. I told you that. My father died on a Friday night. 10 p.m. Friday night. He was supposed to go for a program in Jesus House, Redeemed Christian Church of God, men's convention on Sunday. He was supposed to leave on Saturday to do that men's convention. He died Friday night. 6 a.m. on Saturday, we put him in the mortuary. As we put him in the mortuary, I came back, I packed my bag and traveled to Portaco to preach in that convention he was supposed to preach. I have a choice. To sit at home and tell them my father has died. The program cannot hold. And all they can do is to come to the house and tell me sorry, sorry. And why they are telling sorry? They are looking for us, Oji and uh, Oji. They are looking for mineral. Some will travel and come in the name of sympathy. And they won't go. They stay three days. And when it's time to eat, they ask you, you ought to have food. I had an option. And I said, nobody will sympathize with me. I traveled to Portacon when they invited my father that Sunday morning. And I stepped out. People were watching. I told them, my father is in the mortuary. They started shouting. And that was the revelation of Don Odun that you see today. Sympathy would have killed my destiny. But from that day, I took up all my father's program and refused to cancel anyone. I don't need your sorry. It will not pay my bills. Wake up, my friend. Whatever you lost can be restored. They took your money. They didn't take your life. They took your contract. They didn't take your life. They took your shop. They didn't take your life. Your greatest revenge in life is not for them to die. It's for them to see you succeed in spite of everything they did to you. Get up. Stop avoiding them. What are they going to say about me? Let them say what they want. One thing I know. Wake up. Stop sympathizing. Stop looking for people. A lot of people, every time they see you, they have a bad story to tell. To see if you can dash them something. How many have you received? This is not who you are. Stop advertising your problem. Nobody will buy it. The only thing they can say is, sorry. Hey, yeah. I want to tell you this morning. He said, what are my plans? My plan is to bring you to everything you desired. The problem is, what do you desire? What do you desire? Unfortunately, your desire is negative. How many of you know that your fear is an expectation? You are putting your expectation down. Job said, what I am afraid of has come upon me. Meaning he was thinking of the day he may lose his children. And he lost it. Your fear is an expectation. That is why you don't begin to talk about your fears. You talk about your faith. You call those things that are not as if they are. You begin to call forth your wedding. Call forth your land. Call forth everything. Everything God created, he created by calling it out. What are you waiting for? Start now every day. You don't need to see it. You will see it when you have said it. Step out this morning. Call forth your customers. The one you love that they took. If that one refuses to come, call a better one. Begin to call forth. Speak like somebody without senses. If you want to control the senses. If you
you move with the senses, you stay under the senses. We are supernatural. If a pastor is coming and is telling you before April, you will have something. There is something he's bringing out. Is somebody listening to me? I need you to stand on who you are and manifest the power of creation. That is why I can lay hands on the sick and say, be healed. It is just a transaction of words. Is somebody listening to me? Stop talking like a victim. Talk like a giant. David did not kill Goliath until he spoke like Goliath. Don't let your situation change you from who you are. You are better than the situation. Mephibosheth, I was studying early this morning. When the king called him, he said, Who am I, a dead dog, that you are calling me? And David said, I have a covenant with your father. And that covenant means that you can never be poor. A cripple does not enter palace. But covenants overruled the protocol. I don't care what is running in your father's house. Covenant will overrule that ancestry. Yeah. And I need you to take your place. As you move out on the road, in the shopping mall, in your shade, when it's like it's not, it's not working, speak. 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 Don't just speak speaking. If the first one didn't work, repeat. If the second one didn't work, repeat. Stay on it and keep speaking. I can assure you, in 2024, you will be a thousand times better than what you are. Rise on your feet. This is who I am. I preached in St. Cyprus Anglican Church. And a man I was telling them to give. And the man refused to give. He refused. After like six months, seven months, the man came into my office. I said, yes, can I help you? He said, I worship with St. Cyprus Anglican Church. I said, okay. What is the matter? He said, I brought a seed to you. I said, oh, wonderful. He said, pastor, wait. I said, any problem? He said, there's a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said to me, I don't like you. He said it to me face to face. I don't like you. I said, ah, what did I do? He said, sir, my problem with you is that in a woku boy boy. The way you talk, you talk as if you are the final authority. I looked at him, I said, is that all? He said, yes. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Is it not an error for me to carry this size and not speak in this size? How can I be like this and I, can't, I come out and start talking like a child? I said, where is the money God told you to give me? He said, I, I asked for 20,000 and the man said he's not giving it because of the way I talk. The way he was on Maria. And he didn't give it a mature program. Huh? Their church had another program two months later. A man of God came, the one he likes, and he called the person to come to his office and pray. When the man entered his office, Bishop, to pray, the, man, the bishop said, Ah, I can't pray. Oh. He said, Why? He said, There's what some God told you to do and give to a man of God. You didn't do it. God said, I should tell you to go and do it. He asked, Who is the man of God? The man said, It is one man that came to our church one day. He said, what's the name? He said, it's the Reverend Don or Donze. He said, how much? He said, 20,000. The pastor told him, God said you should give him 50,000 now. No more 20,000. He said, but, the man said, if you say but again, you will give him 100,000. The man shot his mouth. The next day, that's how he found my office and came to give me 50,000. Whoever that delayed on what is belonging to you, let it come to you double. 
it will come to you double. Everything you lost in 2023 in this prophetic feast, I give it to you in a double fold. Receive it in a double fold. Receive it in a double fold. Declare in your heart, God has plans for me. I am a child of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus. This is brief but direct. You will never remain the same. You can never remain the same. If you shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. That's the fact about it. Let them say you are pompous, but get what you are looking for. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Get what you are looking for. Let them call you a pompous man. Pomposity, it doesn't make sense to me. But she needs a new dog, a for help, whatever, baboon. What if, if you get life, if you get this thing called life, you'll be over comfortable, over excess comfort. Now, immediately we share the grace. For those of you that have not gotten the polo for prophetic feast, make sure you get it. That's what everybody's wearing tonight.